John Cena has had one of the greatest wrestling careers in history and is now considered by many to be a part of wrestling's Mount Rushmore. A big reason for his success is the fact that he's been able to consistently switch up his character in order to stay relevant throughout the best part of two decades. While he's never truly turned heel apart from in his early days, he hasn't stayed stagnant either and has made an active attempt to keep his character interesting. In this video, we count down the 10 greatest versions of John Cena throughout his illustrious career. Number 10, Ruthless Aggression 2002. Cena's first gimmick in the WWE came after Vince McMahon ordered the entire roster to the ring on an episode of Raw and declared he needed them all to find some ruthless aggression from within themselves. Ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression. Cena made his WWE debut shortly after on a June 2002 episode of SmackDown by answering an open challenge by Kurt Angle, followed by slapping Angle clean in the face. <laughs> Despite losing the bout, Cena received a lot of respect from his peers in the locker room, including then WWE Champion The Undertaker. Following the near win, Cena became a fan favourite, even beating Y2J at Vengeance in his first pay-per-view match. However, his momentum slowed down quickly and was soon only restricted to appearances on Velocity. As a result of his limited success, Cena turned heel for the first and only time in his WWE career in October 2002 by attacking his then partner, Billy Kidman. This led to a short feud between the two which wasn't all that eventful either. until he became what we now know as the Doctor of Thugonomics. More on that later. Overall, John Cena's early run in wrestling was largely popular due to his iconic debut against Kurt Angle, which is arguably one of the best debuts in WWE history. Other than that, he really struggled to connect with fans and went from storyline to storyline without really making much impact. Number nine, storyline with Nexus. 2010 to 2011. When a group of WWE rookies from NXT invaded Raw in one of the coolest and most violent moments in the show's history, they were positioned to be the next big thing in wrestling. The group later referred to itself as the Nexus. WWE had figured out how to quickly elevate several new wrestlers all at once and when they added John Cena to the group, the story became even more compelling. The stable's early interferences made Cena lose the WWE Championship. In retaliation to the Nexus, Cena quickly formed an alliance and they defeated the Nexus at SummerSlam. Many have argued that Cena buried them on this night and argue that this was the turning point for their eventual demise in the end. However, they still had quite a bit of momentum. Cena lost to Barrett at Hell in a Cell, forcing him to join the faction. Then, at Survivor Series, Cena officiated a match for the WWE Championship between Wade Barrett and Randy Orton. Per stipulation, if Barrett didn't win the championship, Cena would be fired from the WWE. Orton defeated Barrett to retain the title, thus Cena was fired. From the time that the pay-per-view ended to the time when Monday Night Raw started, there was a big buzz going through the internet wrestling community due to Cena being fired. However, WWE never gave the impression that Cena could be fired. Not only was he constantly on TV, but he was also getting involved with the wrestlers. None of the writers bothered to explain how Cena was getting away with this. Then on the December 13th episode of Raw, Cena was rehired by Barrett in exchange that he would face him at TLC in a chairs match, which Cena later won. This pretty much spelled the beginning of the end for the group, and it soon ended as being one of those angles that died with so much unrealized potential. Overall, the storyline had all the ingredients to be a success, but WWE would drop the ball and it eventually died out. It also left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths towards John Cena as the level of the Nexus domination would only be allowed up to a certain point before it began to interfere with the WWE's focus of John as their top commodity. Number eight, free agent and part-time appearances, 2017 to present. This free agent version of John Cena was basically his last real run where WWE was his primary goal. He could work both on Raw and SmackDown and WWE fit him in where needed, which allowed him to be unpredictable and it involved him in some great storylines. Cena feuded and defeated Rusev in a flag match at Battleground, Baron Corbin at SummerSlam, and was defeated by Roman Reigns at No Mercy. I'm still here because you can't do your job. 
Cena was involved in a storyline where he was trying to find his path to WrestleMania, which led him to get squashed by The Undertaker at WrestleMania 34 in just two minutes. He then went on hiatus to focus on his acting and television career. Cena returned in October, competing in a tag match with Bobby Lashley against Elias and Kevin Owens at Super Showdown. He then appeared at WrestleMania 35 in his Doctor of Thugonomics persona to deliver a promo on Elias. Following another seven month hiatus, Cena returned to WWE during the February 28th, 2020 episode of SmackDown. Down. He seemingly announced his retirement before he was confronted by the fiend Bray Wyatt, who challenged him to a match at WrestleMania 36. The two squared off in a surreal cinematic style match called the Firefly Funhouse match. Wyatt ultimately defeated Cena at WrestleMania. After 15 months, Cena finally made his return to WWE programming at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view on July 18th, 2021, blowing the roof off the place. <laughs> He then confronted Roman Reigns, who he eventually lost to at SummerSlam. Right now, whenever John Cena returns, fans are given the returning legend version of him, which is something totally new. He commands a lot of respect, which brings a lot of great work out of him, and it's a version that should only get better with time. Now that he has drifted away from wrestling and more into Hollywood, it seems that the fans appreciate him a lot more every time he returns. Number 7, Initial United States Championship Run. 2004 to 2005. This was a transitional period for Cena where he would really gain momentum and be primed for that position of being a future world champion. Cena won his first singles championship in WWE, the United States title from the big show at WrestleMania 20. During his reign, he defended his title against the likes of Rene Dupree, Rob Van Dam, and Booker T. He dropped the title to Carlito and went off to film his movie, The Marine, only to return at Survivor Series to a thunderous ovation. eventually winning it back in the following weeks. It was clear at this point he was a firm fan favourite and destined for greatness in the WWE. In 2005, Cena took part in the Royal Rumble match, making it to the final two along with Batista until both went over the top rope at the same time, at first ending the match, which was subsequently restarted and won by Batista. The next month, Cena became number one contender for the WWE title at No Way Out, beginning a feud with then champion JBL and his cabinet in the process. In the early stages of the feud, Cena lost the United United States Championship to cabinet member Orlando Jordan. Although Cena didn't have some of his greatest matches during this time, this was the period which propelled him into being a star and he showed everyone that he had all the capabilities to be a major player in the WWE. Number 6, PG era Cena, 2008 to 2010. Cena shocked the world as he made a surprise return as the final participant of the Royal Rumble match in 2008. <laughs> He would go on to have multiple championship reigns during this period, most notably his first World Heavyweight Championship title. However, it largely consisted of many rehashed feuds from the past. He would feud with Triple H and Randy Orton in the months leading up to WrestleMania before rekindling a feud with JBL. After his return from a neck injury, Cena had multiple matches with the likes of Chris Jericho, Edge, and Big Show, all of which he had feuded with in the past. It was during this period that he captured the World Heavyweight title on two occasions. He then reignited his feud with Randy Orton where they participated in a series of matches for the WWE title, with the best arguably coming at bragging rights in a 60-minute Iron Man match. After this, his next most notable feud came against Batista, which was a dream rivalry for many. Cena defeated Batista at WrestleMania 26 for the title, and successfully defended it against Batista at Extreme Rules in a Last Man Standing match, and again at Over the Limit in an I Quit match, thus ending their long-time feud. Overall, this was a successful period for Cena, but it would see him just is reliving some of his most iconic rivalries from the past against the likes of JBL, Triple H, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, Big Show and Edge. Also, he didn't add anything fresh to his character and we were firmly in the PG era of WWE by this point, which did seem to water down his character quite a bit. The most notable fuse to come out of this period for Cena was his rivalry with Batista, which fans had been waiting years for, and of course, his memorable feud with Orton. All in all, it was a decent period for Cena, but nothing truly fresh or groundbreaking. Number five, feud with AJ Styles and The Miz. 2016 to 2017. John Cena feuding with AJ Styles is something fans never thought that they would see happen. It was the prime definition of a dream feud and it brought out a totally new side of John Cena where he took shots at independent wrestling and where AJ had come from. Call me a sorry excuse for a wrestler. Why? Because I didn't put time in on the indie scene. I wasn't built for the indie scene. I was built for the WWE for moments like right here, right now. 
Cena made his full return on the Memorial Day edition of Raw. Four months earlier than had been expected for his type of injury, he was confronted by AJ Styles, which set up a match between the two at Money in the Bank, which Styles won. At the 2016 draft, Cena was drafted to the SmackDown brand. Cena continued his feud with Styles, which resulted in him losing their match at SummerSlam. Cena then challenged him and Dean Ambrose in a triple threat match for the title at No Mercy, and he lost the match after again being pinned by Styles. However, he would get his revenge at Royal Rumble 2017, where he defeated Styles to win the WWE Championship and tie Ric Flair for the most recognized world title reigns at 16. The message set loud and clear by John Cena! Cena went on to lose the championship two weeks later in an elimination chamber match to Bray Wyatt before starting a program with The Miz. This was miles ahead of their feud back in 2011 as it wasn't overshadowed by The Rock. Miz accused Cena of being a hypocrite because of his movie commitments while Cena accused Miz of stealing other wrestlers moves and personalities. The only movies you're in are crappy bootlegs of movies I already made. This set up a mixed tag team match between them and their significant others for WrestleMania 33, which John Cena and Nikki Bella won. Cena actually proposed to Nikki Bella after the match and she accepted. After WrestleMania 33, Cena then went on another hiatus. Overall, this was a really popular version of John Cena and one which audiences loved to see. He took things really seriously and his promos were brilliant, with his in-ring work during this period being even better. Number 4, The Doctor of Thugonomics, 2002 to 2004. On the 2002 Halloween-themed episode of SmackDown, Cena dressed as Vanilla Ice and performed a freestyle rap. The following week on SmackDown, Cena received a new character, a rapper who cut promos while rhyming. Shortly after, he took on the nickname the Doctor of Thugonomics and expanded his gimmick to include rapping before his matches. He began wearing hats and sports jerseys as part of his ring gear. The gimmick change to the Doctor of Thugonomics literally saved his career. As the character evolved, Cena began adopting a variant of the 1980s WWF logo, dropping the F as his signature symbol, along with the slogan Word Life. Cena was eventually joined by an enforcer, Bull Buchanan, who was rechristened to B2. He became incredibly popular and he brought his love of rapping and ability to spit rhymes into the wrestling world, which was incredible. For the first half of 2003, Cena sought the WWE Championship and chased the reigning champion Brock Lesnar after WrestleMania 19, gaining upset wins over Eddie Guerrero, The Undertaker and Chris Benoit. After losing to Angle at No Mercy, Cena became a fan favorite when he joined Angle as a member of his team at the 2003 Survivor Series, where Cena and Chris Benoit were the survivors. He might have only been a young talent, but he he quickly became the most popular name in wrestling with his amazing promos which took him right to the top of the WWE ladder. Number 3 Working with younger talent and his US title run 2013 to 2015. Before Cena started his second run as US Champion, Cena returned at Hell in a Cell and defeated Alberto Del Rio to win his third and final World Heavyweight Championship. He lost that title two months later to Randy Orton at TLC. He then began a fascinating feud with Bray Wyatt, who wanted to prove that Cena's heroic act was a facade characteristic of this era of lies and to turn Cena into a monster. Cena defeated Bray Wyatt in their match at WrestleMania 30 and he went on to win his 15th WWE title at Money in the Bank shortly after. He wouldn't hold the title for long as he got annihilated by Brock Lesnar in a squash match at SummerSlam, during which Lesnar hit Cena with 16 suplexes and two F5s, ending his reign at just 49 days. He feuded with the authority for the months that followed before defeating Rusev at WrestleMania 31 to win the United States title for the fourth time in his career. Cena's insertion into the mid-card title picture instantly made the title important again. Little did fans know, however, that it would become a massive part of Cena's later career. It was this run as the United States champion that really cemented his legacy as a great in-ring worker. He brought back some much-needed prestige to the title and his open challenges became a highlight of Raw each and every week. He had some of the best matches of his career against the up-and-coming talent and did a great job of putting them all over. The list of names include Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Cesaro and Neville. These four men in particular delivered against Cena, raising their star and making the US Open challenge so special. During the run, Cena also faced Seth Rollins in a winner-take-all match at SummerSlam for both the WWE Championship and the United States Championship, which Cena lost, ending Cena's reign at 147 days. Cena then defeated Rollins to win the title back for the fifth time at Night of Champions, a record in the WWE ownership era of the title. 
At Hell in a Cell, Cena finally lost the title to the returning Alberto Del Rio in an open challenge. After this, Cena underwent surgery on a shoulder injury, which would keep him out of action until his return at WrestleMania 32. Overall, this run will be remembered for the US Open Challenge, which led to making a number of stars through some classic matches. It was must-see TV on Monday Night Raw, something that seems almost foreign to the shows of today. The Open Challenge can continue to be repeated, but it has not reached the popularity and success that John Cena did for it. There's there's a reason fans miss him more now than ever, and a lot has to do with his run as the United States Champion. Number 2, Fuse with The Rock and CM Punk, 2011 to 2013. John Cena from 2011 to 2013 was the peak of his wrestling career. He main evented three WrestleManias in a row and brought out some mega fuse during this time against the likes of CM Punk, Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan, and of course, The Rock. His rivalry with The Rock began in the build-up to his feud with The Miz at WrestleMania 27. The Rock made some comments jabbing at Cena during his return promo. You can't shoot me. You can't shoot me. What are you playing, peekaboo? You can't shoot me. I can see you. You can't. To which Cena responded in a throwback to his Doctor of Thugonomics days, with a rap calling out The Rock for abandoning the WWE Universe for greener pastures. For seven years, we couldn't see you. Officially kicking off what would be an epic feud, both in the ring and on the mic. After WrestleMania 27, they did something that had never been done before. Book a WrestleMania main event match, a year in advance. In the meantime, John Cena entered a historic feud with CM Punk. Cena was the family friendly face of the company, upholding his mantra of hustle, loyalty, respect, while Punk was outspoken, brazen, and unafraid to disrupt the system. These two personalities would come together numerous times, producing gripping stories and wrestling exciting matches in the process. Punk defeated Cena to win the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank in arguably the greatest match of both men's careers. They wrestled again at SummerSlam, where Punk picked up another victory. They also had an enthralling triple threat Hell in a Cell match with Alberto Del Rio joining the mix. After the CM Punk feud ended, Cena set his sights back on The Rock and WrestleMania 28. The Rock eventually left the victor on that night. Cena then had an enthralling match against the returning Brock Lesnar where he won at Extreme Rules. During this time though, Cena did end up having his fair share of poor storylines, which is why this period can't eclipse the top spot on this list. His feud with Kane, who was trying to get him to embrace the hate, fell flat. It was a version of Cena fans didn't like at all. He then feuded with John Laurinaitis and The Big Show for a few months after WrestleMania 28, which didn't go down well either. Cena also became the first person to cash in his Money in the Bank contract and not win the title, so 2012 wasn't the best year for him. However, his fortunes changed again on the road to WrestleMania as he won the Royal Rumble match and went on to finally defeat The Rock in a rematch for the WWE title at WrestleMania 29. At SummerSlam, Cena lost the WWE Championship to Daniel Bryan. He then announced he would undergo surgery for a tricep tear and would be out for four to six months. Overall, while facing the People's Champion a second time wasn't ideal, the build to their first WrestleMania match was Cena at his best. He blurred the lines between story and reality and it felt like a more mature version of the character, which audiences really appreciated. He also had some great matches and feuds with the likes of Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, and Brock Lesnar, which really proved his worth as being a huge main event player. Number one, first WWE Championship run, 2005 to 2007. While his Doctor of Thugonomics days were slipping away, John Cena hadn't quite reached the peak of his PG era gimmick yet in 2005. This brought together the greatest run of his career, where Cena was legitimately the best in the business. He was just incredibly popular with the fans. It led to some fantastic moments from feuding with JBL to being the number one Raw draft pick as WWE started to groom him as the top star of the company. Between the years 2006 and 2007, John Cena really began to dominate the main event scene. It was also around this time that there was a real shift in fan perception, and the crowd actually booed him at WrestleMania 22, cheering for the intended villain, Triple H. The negative reaction towards him intensified when he faced Rob Van Dam at ECW One Night Stand, which took place in front of a boisterous crowd of mostly original ECW fans at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Cena was met with raucous jeering and chants of When he began performing different moves as the match progressed, the fans started chanting Sabu and Rey Mysterio had 
gotta be helped out of there. Cena lost the WWE Championship to Van Damme after interference from Edge. This resulted in his epic feud with the Rated R Superstar, culminating in their incredible TLC match at Unforgiven. This was another night where the fans turned on Cena as it took place in Edge's hometown of Toronto, but he emerged victorious and would go on to have his greatest WWE title run ever. He did a great job managing these situations and kept it strictly professional throughout, so credit to him. During this period, Cena was having some of the best matches on the card against the likes of Umaga at the Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, and again a few weeks later, they had the match of the year in arguably the best match in Raw history. Cena also fought in the incredible Fatal 4-Way match at Backlash in 2007 against Edge, Randy Orton and Shawn Michaels. He even managed to get a good match out of the Great Carly at One Night Stand and had an exciting match against Bobby Lashley at the Great American Bash. This was also the period where we would see the start of the iconic long-lasting cena Orton rivalry. Cena ended up retaining his title at SummerSlam and a rematch between the two took place at Unforgiven, with Orton winning by disqualification. Unfortunately, the feud was cut short as Cena suffered a legitimate torn pectoral muscle on Raw and he was stripped of the title, ending what was the longest WWE Championship reign in over 19 years. Overall, Cena's run during this time proved why he was the face of the company and had really earned his spot at the top of the card. Cena was untouchable during this time, both on the mic and in the ring. And that is why this takes the number one spot for John Cena's greatest period in wrestling. So that's all folks. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know your thoughts on what you think the best version of Cena was throughout his career. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.